I've got a little extra time here today. I got this friend of mine visiting, and he's coming back from the Celtics game, so I have to wait for him so I can pick his ass up at the train station. So while we're waiting for him to get back here, we're going to do another segment of this absurdity called the TriMet board meeting, the general manager's report. And these reports have been very weak from Sam, as in no content that's worth anything. Let's see how this one is. General Manager DeSue. Thanks, President Simmons. Good morning, President Simmons, members of the board, staff, and the public. Thank you for being here with us this day. Um, this morning, I will be sharing timely information with you on a couple of updates, uh, updating you on our COVID-19 precautions, briefly reviewing our February ridership with you, sharing with you our fourth quarter 2020 performance report, uh, providing an update. Fourth quarter 2020? He must be, that must be a mistake. Date on the closed Kings Hills Max station. I will preview an upcoming service disruption as part of the Better Red project. We'll provide you a brief update on our redistricting process. And finally, since this is our first board meeting since Transit Employee Appreciation Day, we'll take a moment to say thanks. Uh, first thing this morning, I have an update on COVID-19. I start with a word of thanks to our riders and our employees who are continuing to respect the mask requirement on board, our buses and our trains. Even with the Oregon's indoor mask mandate largely lifted, TriMet must follow the rules of the Transportation Safety Administrative Security. Yes, government wants to create havoc, you know. It's okay to be in store in Walmart, Costco, any other place, but. You people on that public, you scumbags, you must wear a mask. So, I mean, just this continuous, this continuing absurdity that just never ends, just goes on and on. Security Administration, which is known as the TSA, they have extended the mask requirement for transit through at least April 19th, and that's for planes, buses, and trains. The mask mandate has been extended to April 9th, April 18th. TriMet continues to have masks available on board for anyone who might need one. And again, we thank all of those who continue to wear masks, look how, even if they're look how, look at how he smiles. Every word he says is, comes with a smile. That's his skill, is smiling. Vaccinated to help protect the people who are most vulnerable to COVID-19. Next, I'm really excited to take this time to thankfully and finally say that TriMet will keep our return to the office date of Monday, April 4th. We will have employees begin to return to the office at Harrison Square and, all, and throughout our TriMet facilities. Uh, the transition will be gradual as we move forward. A lot of planning and organization has gone into it, and I thank all of those who have been involved. This will be one of the many milestones reached as we go through this evolutionary process of getting back to some sense of normal. Now turn into the February. There's no normal. No, there's never going to be another normal. In case you haven't been paying attention, we went we we went from COVID insanity to Russia without even a without even taking a breath. It was like seamlessly moved into this next thing without even a break. Ridership report. TriMet provided 3.7 million rides last month. That put weekly system-wide ridership for February more than 35% higher than February 2021. However, as you recall last February, we experienced a historic winter weather storm. So ridership was depressed uh, compared to February 2020, where ridership was down 51%. You may also recall that February 2020 marked TriMet's 11th straight month of increased bus ridership. Ridership began to decline due to COVID-19 the following month. Now I'd like to transition to the fourth quarter 2020 quarterly performance report, and I'm going to bring in Miles Crumley, our manager of service performance and analysis. Miles. Thank you. 
Come on, Miles. My name is Trey Mentor, General Manager to see. Where's Miles? My name is Miles Trumley. I'm the manager of service performance and analysis. Here to present to you the 2021 Let's fourth see. quarter. This is covering October, November, and December performance report. Throughout uh, October, November, October, November, and December 2021, we experienced the Omicron spike in uh, COVID-19. During that, uh, there were about 30 or so uh, employees who actually tested positive for uh, COVID-19 at China. We've also been experiencing the Great Resignation, which has impacted lots of other industries across the region. In total, we've seen about 45 operators uh, leave or transition to other positions within the agency during that time period. Next slide, please. Okay. Plus, Plus Max and West content performance is displayed here on the screen. Uh, for 2021, quarter four, uh, bus on time performance was at 89.9%, Max was 88.4%, and West was 98.8%. Yeah, you know, these statistics don't include things like cancel runs. I know in the case of Max, they just change train numbers, okay? Skip runs, drop runs don't appear here, okay? So remember that. This was a slight decrease uh, for bus nope. and Max was an increase for Wes. Uh, Wes uh, has been actually having very good on time performance this year. Uh, in January, I believe they actually had all but one trip hit uh, on time, which is the second time in their history that they've actually hit this milestone. What we're observing is that as more people return into the office, there's increased traffic on the roadways, which is impacting our ability to provide on-time service. Next slide. Picture of bus operator complaints for 100,000 uh, boardings is displayed here on the screen. For calendar year 2021 quarter four, we saw about 10.3 complaints per 100,000 boardings. This is down about 2.7 per 100,000 boardings from the same time period last year. Uh, we continue to see public relations complaints as our largest category, followed by service delivery and safety related. Public relations complaints, what is that? Complaints. Uh, an example of public relations complaints are customer interactions with our actual operators for policy disputes. For service delivery, uh, we see the majority of these, about 85%, are pass ups at stops where the bus just did not serve. And last year, safety related, it's typically the driving behavior of the actual operator or some type of rough ride on the vehicle. Yeah. Next slide, please. Bullshit. Max so op- why would anybody complain about a max operator? I don't even get why. How can you complain about a max operator? They, they just drive the train. <laughs> There's like no interaction. Operator complaints for 100,000 boardings is displayed here on the screen. We saw about 1.8 complaints per 100,000 boardings for calendar year quarter four. This is down about 0.3 uh, complaints per 100,000 boardings. Uh, as I always say, because max ridership Look is at, much higher. Look at this. It, there was five. When was this? It's, oh, that's 2017. However, the number of complaints that we is the number of complaints that we receive is much lower. One complaint will actually show a much larger change in the rate. Overall, uh, public relations complaints make up the bulk of these complaints. Okay, so there are eighty complaints in the quarter. Seventy six in the last year quarter four. Too bad we can't see them. You know, we used to be able to get them. Way back in the day, we used to be able to get copies of all this stuff. Those days are long gone. These, again, include uh, customer interactions and policy disputes about the max service. For service delivery, again, we're seeing a uh, majority, actually 100% of them were all passive related. And for driving behavior, under safety related uh, driving behavior and pedestrian safety complaints. Next slide, please. Railroad Ooh, violations for 100,000. Look at that, the rail violations are up again. Not as bad as 2017. Miles is displayed here on the screen. For calendar year 2021, quarter four, we saw 75 per 100,000 miles. This is an increase of 27.7 per million miles uh, compared to the same period uh, last year. What we're observing is that there's better auditing of cell phone compliance out on the system. We also have ATS trips, and ATS is the automatic train stop system. It's essentially our signaling system that stops the trains when either uh, they 
through speed magnets. For long and short of it, it basically keeps the trains evenly spaced apart. That's sort of the safety system we run on our system. Train orders and doors on platforms are actually trending downwards, and we are continuing to improve how we actually capture the data for rule violations for process improvement. Next slide, please. The calls between uh, road calls is displayed here on the screen for calendar year 2021 quarter four. We saw 47,000 roughly miles between failures. This is actually a decrease of about 9,000 miles from this period last year. Again, Lyft continues to rely on their oldest vehicles uh, due to COVID-19 restrictions. These vehicles are larger than the newer vehicles purchased in the last few years. These vehicles are scheduled to replace uh, at the end of FY23 which we should see a change in this trend. Next slide, please. Fixed route bus service mean distance between failure is down, uh, is displayed here on the screen. For calendar year 2021, quarter four, we saw 10,000 miles between failures. This is a de decrease of about 1,500 miles between the previous period. Uh, what we're seeing is that there is an increase the decrease is explained by an increase in engine system failures. This is an area that we're investigating to identify what the actual failures are occurring for mitigation in the future. Uh, just for awareness, the industry standard uh, for mean distance between failure on a fixed route bus is about 10,005. And so we're still within the range of acceptable uh, performance for our vehicles. Next slide, please. Max slide rail mean distance between failure is shown here on the screen. Lost the calendar year 2021, quarter four, we saw about 12,000 miles between failures. This is actually an increase yeah. from where we were at the same period last year. Yeah. We're beginning to see a decrease in auxiliary inverters and car body deflates. What? Again, uh, rail equipment maintenance continues to investigate why these failures are occurring and make appropriate uh, corrections to our fleets. Next slide, please. Fixed route bus collisions for 100,000 miles is displayed here on the screen. For calendar year 2021, quarter four, we saw 4.6 per 100,000 miles. This is an increase of about 0.67 per 100,000 miles to the previous period. Again, mirror strikes continue to be the largest number of yeah. collisions that we have on our fixed route vehicle. Right, they know that it's a, it's a safety hazard, but they do nothing about it. So look, it's 44% of accidents are mirrors, and they do nothing to change the configuration. As traffic continues to increase out on the roadways, that trend will continue to go up. Next slide, please. Max collisions per 100,000 miles is displayed here on the screen. For calendar year 2021, quarter four, it was about 1.4 per 100,000 miles. This is a slight increase from where the same reporting period was. So there's 15 collisions in the, the quarter. Last year, again, because of the amount of miles that are ran on the MAX system, any one collision will cause a large jump in this rate. From a statistical perspective, we would call this flat. There's really no change. Next slide, please. That concludes my report. Are there any questions? Yeah, great, lovely. Not much there. Well, thank you. Um, Really appreciate the report. Just want to stop and pause for a moment with the board and just let you know. Let's let's think back until the last quarter of last year. We had just transitioned from the Delta to Omicron, and then we had a, a really large spike in security-related issues that was out uh, dealing with our personnel. I want to just let you know that we have world-class employees that work here at Triumph that actually come to work, and I. Really want to thank them. And it was one of the reasons on TTAD, uh, T, T, as we went out and talked to our employees on the Employee, employee Appreciation Day, is just to let them know how much we appreciate them for coming to work and making sure that they move the mission forward. So wanted to say to you, Miles, thank you. Uh, President Simmons wanted to know if there were any questions. If not, I'll move to the next item. I think you're muted. Director Edwards, do you have a question? Thank you. Yes, thank you, um, and thank you for that report, Miles. Um, it was a very good report. I just the question I had: you said we lost 45 operators. Um, what percentage of that um, is that of the total operators that we had, and what are we looking like as far as um, recruiting and um, and retaining operators going forward? 
Miles, let me let me jump in on this one here. So, Director Edwards, we are currently down 65 operators right now. Um, 65. We have put together an executive steering committee, which uh, Rochelle Glacier, our executive. 65 operators missing. That's that's a lot. Director of Transportation is leading it, along with uh, Executive Director Kim Sewell and her team. Um, we put out a myriad of incentives to incentivize uh, people to come work for TriMet. Currently, except the one that really matters, which is raising the pay. The bonus is one thing, but raising the pay. You got to give up a lot to be a bus driver, you know. 21 an hour is not worth it to start. Sorry, you should start at 31 an hour. It needs to be a lot more. These, these bus drivers should be a lot higher pay than what they are. We, we have an incentive that's out right now of $2,500 um, oh, that we're trying to bring people here to work for us. We've increased the pay um, also to $21.86 an hour to start with us. Not high and uh, we're working with the union right now to look at hiring people directly from, from uh, off the street directly into full-time positions. So there's a big push right now that we're trying to move forward. Our next class that we have that's coming up, our numbers in our class used to be at two and three employees that we were recruiting per class here at the last part of last year. We're now increased up. 14 was the last class. We're at 11 in this class here. And uh, we're going to continue on the fight. This is a nationwide issue that all of us across the country that's not are dealing with right now in every industry that's out there. But our goal is to keep keep focus at this year and, and making sure that we keep the mission moving for, for the Portland metro region. Thank you very much. That's not, that's unacceptable. I don't see any more questions on this topic, um, General Manager Dissu. All right, Miles, thank you for being here with us today. Um, next this morning, we're gonna talk about the Kings Hill Southwest Salmon uh, Max Station. And, I think COVID has created what feels like a time warp to all of us. Uh, but believe it or not, March 1st marked two years since the station was closed. As stated in, a, in the board memo that we sent out to you earlier this month, staff is recommending that that station remain closed. Ridership trends uh, indicate riders who previously used Kings Hill have successfully navigated to Providence Park uh, Max Station. And taken in concert with the closure of the Max, uh, the Mall Max Station. It's been two years since they closed that? Wow. Also, also in, in March, March of 2020, 2020 the project uh, time saving of two minutes through downtown Portland has really been realizing. And I take Blue Line uh, coming in from the west side into downtown. And I can see, and I've talked to customers out there about that. They're really excited that we picked up speed because if you go from Kings Hill to the mall station, it, it's it's not even a full block um, in between those two stations there. Um, it should also be... What do you mean the mall? You're talking about Providence Park, not the mall. You know, that, that TriMet received just five complaints from people expressing frustration with the closure but none seen an undue hardship. No, 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 no. They had lots of testimonies against that back when they were doing public hearings. Okay, I remember it. There were a lot more than five people. There was petitions. So that's not true. Because of it. All five complaints were received within the first 15 days of the station being closed, which was two years ago, and nothing more in the last two years since. Well, of course. What, what are you going to do? Fight City Hall? What do you think? They tried to fight you. You rolled them over. You forgot about those public testimonies, didn't you, Sam? That we've received. My next item this morning to you on the agenda is a big service alert. You may have seen it on the news. This is our first disruption required for the Better Red Max Line Extension and Reliability Improvements Project, and it's coming up quickly. We will begin a eight-day disruption of Max Red Line on Saturday, April 2nd, 
No other max lines will be impacted and we will have shuttle buses servicing our red line stations between Gateway Transit Center and PDX. We understand this will be inconvenient, but it sets the stage for an important series of improvements. And we thank our riders for their patience as we work to make the MAG system. Yeah, this is a pork barrel. I, I doubt very much you're going to see any change in anything. It's I, I don't see it at all. I see zero benefit from this. I, I consider this a complete waste of money. It's, it's crony capitalism feeding those contractors. More reliable. The Better Red project is set for completion in 2024. I will definitely be back here with the team to give you guys an update. Yeah, what a waste. That now, is. just a quick update on board redistricting process. Uh, TriMet has scheduled two open houses. This will give the public an opportunity to comment on the three scenarios that redraw the district boundaries to balance the districts by population. We will have one Spanish and one... It has no effect on anything. English on April 5th and also April 6th, respectively. The open house will be held via Zoom and we will have an American Sign Language interpreters will be on hand for both. And then finally, i like to mention the Transit Employee Appreciation Day, which TriMet observed last Friday. For me, it was both Thursday and Friday of last week. We celebrated our Transit Driver Appreciation Day in some form for the last decade. Um, this year, we decided to expand the recognition to honor the hard work and sacrifice of our operators, our frontline staff, and all employees who have reported to work on site for the last two years. So we, we decided to expand it. Transit Employee Appreciation Day gave us an opportunity to collectively recognize everyone who keeps TriMet rolling our riders, and our fellow employees taken care of. And to all of Team TriMet, I say bravo to each one of you. So, President Simmons, I want to go and just uh, state a few things here. Uh, Doug Allen had mentioned earlier about the tolling project. Uh, and I want to just state that we are supportive of ODOT moving forward in its planning so that we can understand more and the NEPA process, including looking at what a transit program can actually look like. So without the analysis, we, we're not going to know what it looks like. So that's what we're supporting is the analysis work to, to move forward. John Carr mentioned about the crossing improvement program. I want to let John know that Metro is leading that project with the crossing improvement program with strong PBOT help. So, so Portland is also helping with Met Metro. This is a PBOT Vision Zero project, and we're going to look into it. Uh, TriMet, we don't own the streets or the sidewalks. We rely on our jurisdictional partners. However, we will look into and see where that project is and, and report back to you. As far as we coming about the budget transparency, will it be something that we have no issue with. Um, we know that the budget will be going in front of TI and, and all the other committees uh, to give a round. So uh, we look forward to working with uh, Director Wei and, and the TIAC group as we move forward with the budget. And also, finally, Director Wei, John Gardner, I reached out to him while we were talking. He's going to reach out to you uh, about the issues of the pilot program that was talked about, and he will be reaching out to you today on that. With that, uh, President Timmons, that concludes my report. Well, that's about what I expected. There's nothing there at all. It's nothing. And I'm not watching any more of this meeting. I'm, I'm done with this. It's, it's just a waste of my time. I'd much rather be doing calls than this. Okay, I'm done with this. Okay, I, it's just useless. What's the point of watching this? They don't tell you anything relevant that's important. They leave out any kind of controversial subject. They don't talk about operations at all. We did find out they're 60 short. That's that's something. And that's disgraceful, but they're not going to do what they need to do. It's just, you know, you're dealing with a, a crime syndicate that is not going to meet the needs of the public, nor meet the needs of the drivers with, like, actual bus barriers that work. They're not going to do it. So, over and out.